Example 1. Find all excluded values of the rational expression. In this example, our rational expression is 2 divided by 3. So the first step is to set the denominator equal to 0. Well, what is the denominator in this problem? The denominator is 3. If I set 3 equal to 0, then I need to solve. Well, notice there's not really any way to solve this because we don't have a variable. 3 is never going to be equal to 0. So this really doesn't make sense. Okay? So after I solve this, I find out that there are no restrictions. I don't have to restrict the domain of the function because there are no variables in the, in the denominator anyways. So in this problem, I do not have any excluded values. So here I can just write none. Let's do another example. 2x divided by 3. Again, the first step is to find my denominator. My denominator is 3. If I set 3 equal to 0, once again, 3 is never going to be equal to 0. So this really doesn't make sense. Okay? So that means that I don't have any restricted values, or excluded values rather, so again I can write none here. So let's look at an example where we do have a variable in the denominator. So in this problem, our, vari or sorry, our denominator is 3x. This time, if I set 3x equal to 0, since I do have that variable, I can solve for x. So the first thing I do is divide both sides by 3, and I find that x is equal to 0. Now remember, what I was actually supposed to do is set the de denominator to not equal to 0. We do that by putting a slash mark through the equal sign. So in other words, x can be any value except for 0. So we want to list all the values that cause the denominator to equal 0. So we'll just say x cannot be equal to 0. That is my excluded value. There is only one value of x that causes the denominator to be 0, and that is 0 itself. Let's do a few more examples. Here we have 2x divided by 3x. Now at this point you might be wondering, well, what about the numerator? What about the guy upstairs? And in this particular um, application, when we're just trying to find restricted values, we're not going to worry about what's upstairs. There will be other problems and other things that we have to do where we care about both the numerator and the denominator. But when we're talking about restricted values, remember, all we care is what's going to make the denominator equal to zero. So it's okay that we're completely ignoring the numerator, even if something might cancel out. It's okay to ignore it. So again, my denominator is 3x. I set that equal to zero. I solve 4x. I find that x equals 0. Again, remembering to put a slash mark through this equal sign to remind myself that the one thing that x can't do is x cannot be equal to 0. And that is my excluded value. Let's look at example 5. This is getting a little bit more interesting because now I have a binomial in the denominator x plus 2. So remember, I can't let x plus 2 equal 0. So I have to solve this. This is still a basic one-step equation. I solve it by subtracting 2 from both sides of the equation, and I find out that x cannot be equal to negative 2. If I let x be equal to negative 2, then I'm dividing by 0, which is undefined. So again, in this problem, I only have one restricted value, and that restricted value is negative 2. Let's do one more example. In this problem, we actually have another binomial, x squared minus 16, in the denominator. But notice that x squared term is going to give us a little bit more interesting answer. So again, our restriction is that this whole expression cannot be equal to 0. Now you might remember, um, in order to um, solve this, we need to factor the polynomial x squared minus 16. You might also realize that this is a difference of squares. So we can factor it by x plus 4, x minus 4, and still, um, that whole expression cannot be equal to 0. Now, because we have two linear terms here, uh, we can apply what's called the zero product property, meaning that the only way for x plus 4 times x minus 4 to be equal to 0 is if one of these two terms, either x plus 4 or x minus 4, is itself equal to 0. So we have two one-step equations to solve. 
So let's just go ahead and do that. Minus 4, minus 4, plus 4, plus 4. So x cannot be equal to negative 4, and x cannot be equal to positive 4. So in this case, we actually have two unique restricted values. So I can write it like this. I can write x is not equal to negative 4, comma, positive 4. If you wanted to write it out as x is not equal to 4, x is not equal to negative 4, you could. The way I wrote it out first is just a little bit of a shortcut. Okay? So um, if you're wondering, there are other ways to solve this. So for example, you might think of, if you have this expression here, you might think of adding 16 to both sides of the equation to solve this. Um, the problem with doing it this way is that a lot of times students forget that when you take the square root of a square, you have you actually have the absolute value, and that uh, results in both a plus, uh, a positive, and a negative answer. So I strongly urge you to kind of steer clear from this method. We will, you know, talk about that and learn about that later in the semester. But um, since we just talked about factoring, and that was what we just learned, I would strongly urge you and recommend to stick with the factoring method rather than other methods of solving that polynomial.